I'm sorry, Christians, but I tried. <laughs> I tried. I know that religion can be a very heated topic. It creates so many different emotional reactions since we come from various different belief systems, right? Backgrounds, cultures, depending on where in the world you were born, where you grew up with, what people you hung around with, what books you had access to. The last thing I want this video to be is me lecturing anybody on what to believe. It hurts my heart knowing how much conflict and just fighting, you know, that comes with even just talking about religion. And that sucks. It does. Do you know how much I would love to just talk about this kind of stuff in a conversational style of just exploring, man, you know, exploring without having all these people kind of like, yeah, anyways, as you can tell, I have a bit of an emotional baggage when it comes to this topic. And for a few reasons. All I want to do in this video is to share my journey, share some insights that may or may not be useful for you. I hope it is. That is my intention. And this is completely off the cuff, right? I'm, this is coming straight from the corazón. I'm really not trying to write this essay or mm, so I'm going to make these main points. And like usually I do with videos, but like this time I just, I just want to just relax, just, <sighs> well, let's talk about this. I guess it all started when I was a child exiting the vagina portal of my mother and I came screaming into this world. Actually, no, hang on, that's way too far back. Long story short, I grew up Catholic. My mum was, is, <laughs> she was Chilean, now she changed her, her race <laughs> through genetic engineering. She's a Mandarin lady now. My mother's Chilean. My father is Polish. Very old school mentality who came from a completely different world. And my dad was born in like late 40s, mum in the 50s, just to give you an idea. And because they came from these countries, Catholicism was the thing. I believed it just because, you know, I was a child. I guess I had no real choice. I do remember believing in God, you know, talking to God and just being connected with that side. But there was a part of me that I didn't, never enjoy church. I didn't like any of the rituals. I, there was something that just didn't resonate with me, didn't vibe with me. Basically, something horrible happened to me. I bargained with God. I said, if you're real, you'll change this. He didn't change it. So I was like, screw you. Very angry. Became an atheist for not very long because I kind of found it like intuitively I knew that it was silly to have this certainty that there is no God. Because I know some atheists are going to be like, oh, actually, atheism is the lack of a belief in God. But to me, that's what agnosticism is. I think that if you look at the old academic definition of atheism, which is quite obvious when you look at the OGs, you know, like Christopher Hitchens or something like that. But for the longest time, atheism was an active belief that there is no God. Actually, I'm going to give kudos to the atheists because, man, they really, they played this 4D brilliant chess move where they moved the goal post, right? So now it's no longer there is no God. It's, oh, I just lack of a belief in God. So it's the religious person that has to give me the evidence, right? Give me the science. You must tell me. And so it's really the religious people who are constantly on the defense and the atheists on the attack. So it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's like, it's a game you can never lose. So it's like, wow. <laughs> and I used to really be into like these debates and stuff, but yeah, an atheist, it, they can't lose. I was an atheist and just basically making fun of religious people. And I, I developed this anti-Christian attitude where it just made me sick, homophobic, just, ah, just stuck in the past, just controlling the masses, you know, the whole stereotypical surface level understanding of religion. But then eventually I realized that, well, you can't really be certain there's no God. That's just like, <laughs> I would have to be omnipotent to even make that claim and search every corner of the universe, but not just this dimension, in all dimensions. And that's kind of impossible to do, as far as we know anyway. And so I transitioned to agnosticism, which is just like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't really have a position because there's too many conflicting idea. And I guess I didn't have the sophistication and intelligence to really discern true from false. Because I mean, I'm a kid, we're all learning, right? It's like basically I'm learning how to, how to walk and run and etc, etc. Long story short, basically at the beginning of this YouTube channel, I started getting into New Age spirituality, especially with after my rock bottom in life and I just got really attracted to Buddhism, the practicality 
of their philosophies. Uh, I really enjoyed the, it was the energy, man, it was the energy. I went to the Big Buddha 10 years ago. I stepped into this space and just, I think I got blessed by a monk or something. I'm not sure, but it was just the energy and the, the serenity and peace and this kind of possibility. I had this glimpse like, oh, there's somewhere to go here. I don't always have to be so angry and self-destructive and pushing people away and being in this really miserable place, you know, and it helped. I started getting into it, I started meditating, getting into lucid dreaming. Then I discovered the psychedelic train through Joe Rogan, Aubrey Marcus, Graham Hancock many years ago. And that eventually inspired me to just book a retreat in the Amazon rainforest. And this was during a time where no one had really done ayahuasca. I mean, no one as in, no one that I knew in my group, even online, there were like these kind of obscure, crappy videos there, but there was, there was nothing, there was nothing. But I took that leap anyway, and I don't know why. I just knew that I needed to do something drastic to change my life. I had enough. And that's how change happens. It's either, well, there's only really one way. You gotta hit rock bottom. But there's two ways to get there. Either physically, in reality, you just let life do it for you, or you have to tap into that rock bottom emotionally, mentally. Feel it. Consciously break the pattern, you know what I mean? And listen, it's definitely better to stop your pattern earlier than later. Because time speeds up, my friends. And so anyways, you all know the story about my ayahuasca journey, changed my life, changed my perspective, my relationship with myself, with duality, with reality. And I don't know if I ever kind of bought into the idea that like we're all God and drag kind of thing. I think I did. I'm, I'm pretty sure because I listened to all the same guys that everyone else did, you know. Uh, Terence McKenna, Alan Watts, Ram Das. And so I continued down this path, you know, doing, doing psychedelics and just your stereotypical modern spirituality stuff and meditation and into Buddhism especially. Very anti Western <laughs> religions. And so I got to this point in life where I hit a real rock bottom, a spiritual rock bottom. And I remember being in such a dark place and I would even talk about like, oh, I don't think I'm going to do psychedelics anymore. And a certain percentage, a significant portion of my own followers attacked me. And I thought, wow, what does it matter if I continue or not continue? Why do you, you know? And then that kind of made me uh, retreat from the community a little bit, you know, and I admit that. And I shouldn't have because really it was a small percentage of people, but it was still a significant portion. But I was in a very fragile place, so it, it did get to me. I felt like I was truly alone. I saw people on YouTube and I think it was stories about people who were in a similar boat as me in terms of this spiritual void going through this new age spiritual path. And then finding Jesus, Jesus came to them. They start to delve back into Christianity and their whole life changes and you see it in their energy and the color in their face. And I start seeing all these testimonials, this whole thing, you know, the Christian YouTube, well, Christianity is, you know, the biggest religion in the world, going to be surpassed by Islam, I'm sure very soon. One day I interviewed Stephen Bankart, who was an old ex-New Ager, like he had one of the biggest spirituality websites in the world. I think it was made with spirit science and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, his website was huge. He had a mansion. He was super successful, very well off. And he reached the dark point. Jesus came. Oh, Jesus is Lord. And then he dedicated his whole life to preaching the gospel. I don't know if it was a mistake or not. I guess maybe, I don't know, I don't know. I'm still, I, I feel like I need to zoom out of my life a little bit more to see if this was a wise decision or not. But I ended up interviewing this guy on a psychedelic New Age channel. So you, you could imagine the backlash and hate that I've gotten since. And I'm sure I lost many, many, many followers. And it's fair enough. Absolutely. Listen, I'm here. Dude, imagine you, like, you subscribe to this guy doing all the psychedelics and trip simulation and all of a sudden he's interviewing a fundamentalist Christian. It's like, oh no, please, not Tom. <laughs> but it wasn't like that, right? I was. This was a point where it was a... It was just an exploratory phase, you know, and I kind of wanted to challenge my audience 
you know, I think most of you can take it, right? I'm, I'm sure most of you can hear a conflicting belief, as long as it's not said in such a, like, a vile way, but just someone sharing a perspective that may conflict with your own, I'm sure most of you aren't going to lose your shit over it, right? But some people do, some people do. And I have to admit, listen, in that interview, I was, I was too nice, right? And this was just part of my own insecurity, and you could see in my, especially my earlier podcast, that I was just, I didn't ask enough challenging questions. I didn't. Because I was just like trying to build rapport with whoever I'm talking to. That's just how, that's just my nature. You know, you could be a Satanist and I would still be like talking like I'm buddy buddies with you. Because I don't judge you for what you believe in. It's really the, the energy that you're putting out. And then I uploaded that video and I got a couple people who made videos on their YouTube channels calling me out, basically saying that I am like supporting or promoting homophobia and I'm anti-LGBTQ, whatever, and I'm like, it wasn't good. That spiraled my mind out of control and I just got like really angry, right? And listen, at the time it, it did upset me, but I didn't respond to those videos because again, it's like one of those things, like if you if you respond, then you're just going to swing the emo the emotional pendulum and it's just going to come back and forth forever. And I didn't I didn't want to go down that route. I don't I don't like that that kind of petty conflict. And especially like if you think about it, like if someone makes a video about you without reaching out to you first or at least without really knowing you and just assuming all this stuff, then it's like am I really going to waste my time talking to you? You know what I mean? Interacting with you. It's just it, it didn't seem right. Because the truth is, guys, these people were to like message me or something like that and explain how they feel about this video, I probably would have deleted it. And you know what? I probably would have deleted it anyways. But the reason why I didn't is because of those videos. Again, natural contrarian, right? <laughs> Which can sometimes be good, but sometimes to my detriment. In this case, it was to my detriment because I left the video up just to spite those people who were like, take it down. I'm like, you know what? No. <laughs> I'm gonna promote it. Nah, I didn't. And so I continued down this Christian path, like re actually reading the Bible for the first time in my life, getting a study Bible. I have all these boxes of books on Christian theology, right? And I don't want this channel to be about religion and Christianity and that kind of stuff, but I did want to just let out the air, you know what I mean? But basically I went balls deep into Christianity and eventually I kind of moved from Protestant Christianity to Catholicism started to go deeper into my roots, and then I started to be, oh, Protestant Christianity, nah, 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 that's BS because of this, this, and this. It's Catholicism, this is the real, this, it seems anyway, to be more of a real truth. And at this stage, I was never like, yes, Jesus is God, but I was like, I was lean, I was just really interested, right? It was something pulling me, I wanted to learn more. And there was something very inviting, and I do remember, like, going to a point where after kind of delving deep into Catholicism, then I went even deeper into Eastern Orthodoxy, right, which is even older. So Eastern Orthodoxy is like the oldest form of Christianity, so, or so they claim anyway. <laughs> and this one was, oh, it was beautiful because Eastern Orthodoxy kind of ticked all the boxes in my mind because it had that mystical component that things like Buddhism or New Age spirituality and psychedelics have, that experiential spirituality which my form of Christianity growing up had none of that. It was just believe this or go and burn in hell for eternity while your skin bubbles and bursts with pain and suffering <laughs> because God loves you, you know? <laughs> so Eastern Orthodox had this allure where it kind of reconciled a lot of paradoxes that I was struggling with through New Age spirituality. I was too confused. It was too, it was too much. It was like, like New Age spirituality is like learning self-help and business principles from watching as many YouTube videos as possible. And then religion or an organized religion is like getting an actual course that's structured in a specific way. And it served me up until a certain point until I was like, ah, nah, you know what? I, I need to, I need more, more structure. Yeah, anyways, yada, yada, yada. Started going to church. I know. <laughs> Someone like me who used to go to church and feel like I was burning. Like I, I hate, I hated church. And, but I went to the Eastern Orthodox Church. I went there every, like, twice a week. Started going with my girlfriend, my wife now, and a friend. And it was beautiful because it was like a, 
it was basically like a time where you go and you pray and you meditate and you you know listen to a sermon and you're around loving people and it was beautiful absolutely and the the paintings was just wow because like Catholicism is more like this gothic ooh, more ominous kind of ooh. orthodoxy is more like <laughs> but there's some weirdness to that too but basically I was like I was into it right I was like yeah okay cool I, I think I can get on board with this, with the, with the Trinity, right? And this, uh, their version of what God is, which is like this absolute being. I don't know, because any word that you ascribe to God, it's already, you lose the point. Because the first principle is that God is unknowable in essence. You can only know s certain energies of him. I think this is what orthodoxy talks about, was there's the nature of God, which is unknowable, because it, it, it's, it's outside of space and time, yada yada. And then there's God's energies which is like grace, wisdom, all these metaphysical principles that we experience in reality. I was like, oh, okay, cool. It was very nuanced. That's what I really appreciated about orthodoxy. And then what I realized over time is that it's not the religion that I'm looking for necessarily. It's community, you know? It's just having a, a north star, something to just guide you to God. That's really all I wanted. I just wanted to be, I just want to be with God, man. I want to connect with whatever that source of the universe is. That thing, well, again, things, there's no words for it, right? <laughs> but God, I want, I want to experience that because I had a glimpse of, of when I did 5-MeO DMT and I was beautiful. But how do I cultivate that relationship on a daily basis? It's like, what, you're telling me if we didn't discover this toad in this past hundred years, we just can't experience God? I refuse to believe that. I think there's always a way. But what I realize is, even with good and evil, is that good is something that you have to actively go towards. It's never going to go out of its way to, come on, come this way. Like, certain times, because there's, there's grace, right? You hit rock bottom, something happens, full transformation. Fantastic. But generally speaking, you have to actively cultivate good. Whereas evil goes out of its way to pull you in everywhere. Let's look at reality. We don't have to get into that now. But there is a spiritual war going on. And I, I think to tie back to my new age journey, I think one of the things that frustrated me was this, uh, just this really high level of narcissism that I saw everywhere. You know, the spiritual ego and... Uh, people think of their God, and if you're God, then there's really, there's nothing above you. You are the pinnacle of all of existence on all dimensions, and then it's like, where do you go from that? But like I said, I started to see the same patterns that I do in any community, and then there was like, you know, like the ortho bro community, and they were just like, it was a lot of pettiness. And I know, I know, I shouldn't judge a religion based on people, but again, deep down, I'm looking for community here, because God shouldn't be behind the paywall. That I know in my heart. Because from the orthodox perspective, it's like that's the one true religion. If you go anywhere else, even in other branches of Christianity, you're going to burn in hell for eternity. Listen, when I read the Bible, when I read Jesus' words, and I know I haven't sp spoken too much about Jesus, but just let me just say that just the whole symbol of Jesus and everything that he represents and all of that, like I've always loved Jesus. I love the idea of what he represents, whether he was real or not. I mean, who's going to be against, be kind to one another, you know? Tell the truth. Just be good. Take out the plank in your own eye before you try to take the speck in your brother's eye. Don't judge. Unless ye be judged. All that kind of stuff. Like, I, everyone's going to agree with Jesus stuff. Like, there are certain things in the Bible that's like, ooh, eesh. Especially with the kind of anti-homosexuality stuff. Like, that stuff, like, you can't... It's hard to ignore that, right? There's certain things in the Bible you're like, ooh, I don't know about that. But then, of course, in the Orthodox perspective, it all ties in. It's all the Word of God. That's the thing. So you have to take it all. You have to take it all. You can't just pick and choose. I was always attracted to just the idea of Jesus. and I, I like that. There was a very loving, compassionate feeling. And maybe there was something there. But I never quite got to that point where I was like, oh, yeah, Jesus is God, you know? It never, like, I, I, man, I've prayed for so long, begging for him to come. I've had 
psychedelic trips where I was so desperate that I had to call Jesus' name. And the voice that came back to me was, Jesus ain't going to save you here. And then I'm looking at all these different ex these testimonials of like, yeah, just call Jesus and he'll come. I'm like, why hasn't he come for me then? And I can understand there's some other perspectives that will say that he did come. It's just not in the way that you want. Because it, maybe that's true. Maybe there's a part of me that I just want that instant gratification. You know, it's like having a psychedelic trip. It's just, boom. You're right in it. You've got the visuals. You've got everything to accompany this experience, which makes it super real. Whereas when it comes to meditation and prayer and having a relationship with God, it's a lot more subtle. It requires so much more work. So I kind of get that. But at the same time, that emotional connection, that, oh, yes, Jesus is God. It, it never, honestly, it never. Throughout the whole journey that I went through, not once was I like, I had that certainty. And you need that faith. And this is why I'm not a Christian. The reason why I'm not a Christian is because what is a Christian? First of all, a follower of Christ. And what is a follower of Christ? Someone who believes that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Messiah. That Jesus Christ is God. Whereas I don't believe that. Therefore, that disqualifies me from ever being Christian. But I do resonate with a lot of the theology, into, at least when it comes to the Father. I don't like, listen, this is something else that I'm just being mindful of my energy here because I don't want to just start fighting. Something that has bothered me about Christianity is this whole over-masculinity. -mas and, okay, just calm down, you red pill, manosphere people. Hear me out first. Let me ask you a question. Is gender and sex a physical manifestation? Something that exists in space and time, right? Now, if God was outside space and time, outside of any concept that you could possibly imagine, how does it make any sense that he would be any one particular gender? Wouldn't God be above gender? You know, I mean, it makes sense to me anyway. And there's this always like, yes, you've got the Father, you've got the Son, you've got the Holy Spirit. But then, I don't know, it just seems a little bit unbalanced. I actually prefer Islam's perspective on God because it, it's more simplistic but it makes more sense it makes and it's definitely more monotheistic because there is a lot of again we're not going to get into that here because this video has already gone for a little bit too long but but with Islam they recognize that God is above gender but they use he just because there's no other language for it so that I understand See, so Islam has like an excuse for that like they use he because there's like no really other accurate word for it because you can't really call God an it, right? I feel like that'd be more more disrespectful. But in Taoism they even say they even say the same thing. I was I've been listening to that a lot lately, which is oh beautiful. Beautiful. My my favorite Eastern religion actually. Uh at least the one that resonates with me the most. But even in Taoism they're like, okay, because God is outside of this and that, they they kind of like go back between saying he or she and stuff like that. And I know that offends and enrages a lot of people. It's blasphemy. I basically started to dive deep into Judaism. Sorry, there's a cupboard here. But I, I was starting to... This is a reminder for me to... Relax. It's all good. So I delved into Judaism and started to learn from actual rabbis who speak Hebrew the original text of the original Bible. And if you ask any Christian, any single Christian on this earth, for them to be a Christian, they have to admit that every single word of the Old Testament is true. Yes or no? Christians, is the Old Testament the Word of God? Correct? Well, I. it's very interesting when... This is why priming is affects everything, right? If you already enter your reading experience with this pre-bias of Jesus is everywhere, then you're going to see Jesus everywhere. I did. I read the Old Testament with the perspective of Christianity first, instead of reading the Old Testament from a pure, like unbiased perspective first. You know what I mean? And there are a lot of quotes in the New Testament, and I'm not going to get into it here because, again, Nah, <laughs> we're, we're, just, we're just having a chat here, right? But there's a lot of quotes in the New Testament that refer back to Old Testament quotes. And it was like, oh, Isaiah said, blah, 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 blah. Therefore, mm. and it's like, yeah, people just accept this. And the Christians are like, yeah, 
But then I go to this rabbi and he's like, well, actually, in Hebrew, you know, because, you know, I, I speak Hebrew. <laughs> that doesn't mean that at all. This actually means this. Oh! <laughs> and a kind of flip. And then I started to learn more about Judaism. And then it's like, ah, oh, so I, it just, now I'm kind of, I have this, I don't have a certainty of what Christianity is, but there is a lot of com uh, conflicts. I thought that the Old Testament and the New Testament was all integrated. It's just, if, if something seems contradictory, it's because you don't understand it. This is what a lot of Christians will tell you, but there is a lot, there are contradictions. And it's not even contradictions from what atheism, atheists say. It's like, actually listen to the Jews. Because again, if the Old Testament is true, why not learn from the Jews? They're kind of like the OG. They invented the bloody religion. You know what I mean? The Jews are the ones who freaking wrote it, man. And then the New Testament, they changed the language. It was originally written in Greek. And then, schism. Now, I'm not saying that Christianity is false because one rabbi said so. Because, I, I, again, I'd have to go into this whole deep dive, which we, don't, we just don't have time for that. But there are certain contradictions, at least for me, that I was like, oh, okay. It does kind of seem like idol worship, you know what I mean? And I, even when I went to Orthodox Church, like, you gotta like, luckily it was COVID during the time, <laughs> but usually you gotta like kiss the priest's ring and you gotta kiss all these icons and stuff like that. And there is a little bit of weirdness. And I know it, it, I know they're gonna say, yeah, we're not worshiping, we're venerating, et cetera, et cetera. Like I get it, but just like really zoom out from the outside. You're kissing images, bro. You're kissing a priest. There's always a paywall, you know? And maybe that's my own pride and ego of like, I want to be, I want to meet, <laughs> let me see the manager now, right? Maybe I'm just being a Karen. I'm being impatient. Either or, we're not going to get into that here, but all I can say is that just for me, for me personally, that emotional reson resonance wasn't there. And I can't, you can't think your way to God. That's what I've discovered. As, as much as you can logically understand this, and it's interesting, right? Learning about theology. And I believe in God. Like right now, where I'm at, just with my relationship with God, is that I believe in the, pretty much all these principles that you know Judaism, Christianity, Islam teaches in terms of there being a distinction between creator and creation. Because in New Age spirituality, creation is the creator. Therefore, physical matter is no different to God. Therefore, the shit that you take in your toilet ain't any more sacred than the temple. And then if that's the case, again, then where, where do you go from there, you know? I believe that there is a God, for sure. There has to be some sort of a higher purpose or, or meaning or intelligence to this. It, this is too perfect. It's too perfect. There's way too much order and symmetry and mathematics and objective reality. And then we can go on and on and on, but there's, there's some intelligence to this thing. There was some thought put behind this. And so even though right now I don't have a particular one religion, I definitely believe in whoever the creator of this universe is, the Most High. This is how I approach it anyway. Is just, I believe there's a God. For me anyway, it's changed my life, just being grateful and connected and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I do feel quite envious actually for religious people, if I'm being honest. Maybe because maybe there's this part of me that just doesn't want to commit to the one thing, you know? And I honestly think that joining a religion, even if you don't believe in it completely, I think joining a community with like-minded people who want to grow and become better no matter what it is, I don't think that's a negative thing. It's good to surround yourself with peers who want a similar thing than you do. But then there's a lot of ego stuff because I, what, I, what kind of turned me off orthodoxy, yeah, before I forgot to finish that thread, but with the ortho bros, it was like, they just attack Christians, they attack Protestants and Catholics and even other Orthodox people. and all. They just attack, 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 pride, 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 ego, 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 but, oh yes, I believe in God, you know, it's like, I don't know, I, I didn't, I, I just saw past the bullshit, to be honest, and I was like, no, nah, I don't want, I don't want any part of this. And then I started to notice it within myself, I started to become more prideful, I started to judge others more. I didn't like that. And again, I'm not blaming Christianity. Let me make that very clear. I'm just explaining my journey here. So I'm just looking at it from an outside perspective of like, where did I actually go? Because there were sorts of there were a lot of parts that definitely helped me, 
terms of just being more more connected and grounded, etc. But it did make me more angry. It made me more prideful, which is the opposite of what Jesus taught. And I really think about this. Does Jesus is let's just say Jesus is God, right? Just for the sake of argument. And there's a Protestant and a Orthodox, and they both go to heaven, right? And Jesus is there in the gate, and he's like, "What's going on, mate?" And the Protestant's like, oh, Jesus, oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited and grateful to enter the gates of heaven. And Jesus would be like, yeah, I can see from your file here that, yeah, you've actually, you're a fantastic person. You served people all your life. You gave to the poor. You even gave your shirt to a homeless person. Oh, you actually followed everything that I taught. Very impressive. Jimmy, is it? Mm, very nice. But listen, even though that you are the perfect example of what I wanted for people, ah, I'm sorry, I can't let you in. Yeah, it's dad. He said that you kind of joined the wrong branch. We kind of, we had this whole system going. Like, we were supposed to be orthodox, you know what I mean? So, yeah, sorry, mate. Pulls lever, ksh, falls to hell. <laughs> and then the orthodox comes, and Jesus is like, yeah, listen, man, you've been a piece of shit, you were... You beat your wife, you do, do, do horrible things. You weren't a good Christian at all. But you did barrack for the right team, so welcome. You barracked for the right team and you believed that I was God. Nice. I really doubt <laughs> that if Jesus was God, that there would have he would have this attitude. I've gone on many travels and explored the, all different religions, like firsthand, right? When I go and study Buddhism, I go to Thailand. When I want to study Hinduism, I go to India. And there have been many people on many different paths, like Hare Krishnas, Hindus, Sikhs, Sufis, Buddhists, hell, even some atheists, <laughs> who are so kind in their heart, and they give, and they serve, and they, they embody that Christ-like energy. That's beautiful. And then you meet... You know, the right Christian who's like, who chose the right branch of Christianity and he's like a dick. He's prideful. He just serves his own ego and attachment to ideology. So I really don't think it's a particular team that you go for. It's how you're approaching life. You know, are you, are you giving more than taking? And there are a lot of principles that are universal in all religions. And the Christians, I know you're going to use the P word on me because I'm not committed to one particular religion, which is perennialist. Basically meaning that you believe all religions take you to the same mountaintop. I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't think any religion is going to get you to any mountaintop. It's, it's a set of, it's a map <laughs> at best. You know what I mean? And I don't believe all religions are built equally. And there are some that I resonate more than others. But that's me. Because I was born in a particular timeline with my belief systems and parents and life experiences. That's just how it is. And if you are curious, it is... Dun. When it comes to religion, I can still learn from Christianity, I can still learn from Islam, I can still learn from Judaism, I can still learn from Buddha, Buddhism. And I love Taoism, this is something that, I've, like the Tao Te Ching I've been listening to for a while. Very useful. And whether or not I find one perfect religion, or invent my own, I don't know, <laughs> become a cult leader, I'm not sure. But right now, I'm happy with where I'm at, because I'm, so right now I'm at where I'm at. I believe in God. I think that we should just follow what Jesus said instead of the specifics of the church. Because Jesus, even Jesus, man, like think about literally the only prayer that he taught his disciples. The only prayer that is written. What does he say? Does he say, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hallowed be thy name? No. He says, Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Very powerful prayer. You don't have to be a Christian to receive benefits from this. Listen, I know that I wasn't going to make any specific points, not to, you know, create conflict, but, ah, screw it, just one. The Holy, the Holy Trinity and the whole idea of Jesus being God was invented by one man, Paul, Paul the Apostate. <laughs> and Paul 
never met Jesus in his entire life. So the whole theology of the Trinity is based on one guy who never even met Jesus. I know, okay, I got a bit too, too passionate there, too sorry there, I'm sorry. Maybe Jesus is God. <laughs> Maybe Paul knew what he was talking about. But for me, I doubt it, man. I really doubt. Yeah, I, I doubt it. I doubt he was God. I think he was probably a great man who did amazing things. And like anything, human nature is very corruptible. And grief goes on. And here we are. But let me just end this video by saying that I actually think that religion is more of a force of good than it is bad. I know some people think that religion is opiate of the masses and it controls people and corrupts people, but every single community on earth does it. And in fact, I would say music, music and sports is the new religion of this world. That is actually what is controlling people more than any religion could dream to. It's got to have a critical mind. So yeah, anyways, let us know what you guys think. Like, where are you on this journey? Do you believe in God? If so, what's your approach to life? Do you think religion is bad? Do you think there's some good stuff? Which ones do you resonate with? Because how I think about it is that there is much to learn from everybody. And I also believe that God's grace permeates through this entire existence. I don't think God is going to be playing favorites of, oh, you believe that? No, 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 no. Pa! Anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. We've gone on way too long. See you soon. Peace.